Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Unmapped Woman by Abigail Morley. So I will, as always, read you the blurb, and then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and share some thoughts and a rating at the end. Now, with poetry collections, what I tend to do is just read out some of the poems, so you can get a good feel as to whether they're your kind of thing, you know? Uh, so the blurb here, anyway. The Unmapped Woman, the deeply moving new collection of poems by Abigail Morley, explores the altitudes of trauma, mapping the stark new territory that loss leaves behind, where the landmarks of absence overfill with memories, where the missing loom large, casting their unshifting shadow. Several lives and life-changing themes cross paths in this clear-sighted and profound book, and Morley's adept and courageous poetry guides us through the wooded shades and raw coastlines, dauntless. Bear with me, I can take nature, let wind whip our faces. From the hollowing of the empty place and the five stages of grief, these resolute poems with their metal and wholeheartedness chart their remarkable bold course towards the voicing of a song, the light of the next day. And I thought it was interesting right on the blurb, right on the rear cover, one of the testimonials mentions um, uh, George Eliot, who I'm currently reading as my bedtime book. I'm currently reading... Oi! Don't! Stop it! He's ripping the tabs out of my Haruki Murakami book. Leave the tabs alone. They're there to mark what I have to talk about. You can come and have these ones. Alright? Alright, good. So here is Abigail Morley. Here's her... Uh, hey, Biggie. Here's her uh, bio. Abigail Morley was shortlisted for the Forward Prize Best First Collection with How to Pour Madness into a Teacup, Cinnamon Press. Her most recent collection, The Skin Diary, was published by Nine Arches Press in 2016. Snow Child and an ekphrastic collection, Eva and George, Sketches in Pen and Brush, are published by Pindrop Press. Her pamphlets, In the Curator's Hands and the Memory of Water, are published by Indigo Dreams Publishing. In 2017, she was named as one of the five poets to watch by the Huffington Post. She is a co-editor of Against the Grain Poetry Press and editor of The Poetry Shed. And uh, yeah, I met Abigail. We were both on a press trip to Latvia to learn more about Latvian literature, which seems kind of apt because... Um, Latvia has this real strong tradition of poetry, so so yeah, she reached out to me and asked me if I would like to um, read and review a copy, so I said, yeah, sure, why not? So um, here, I'm going to read some poems, so this is Expected. We all start in water, endure its fullness, bellies hoarding each molecule, the swell of its ocean windblown for a thousand miles. So when her tide breaks, she's hauled from the house with the knowledge she's rupturing. I brim mid-stride on the uneven pavement, split our blood for the first time. She watches me glisten across tarmac, takes her fulsome weight from the curb to the taxi, hopes to replenish us both with a sack full of saline, knows she's not the right one to receive the cuckoo baby nestling in the thud of her pelvic bones. You are alright there, young man? Seed. I know you are pocket small, an ounce of flour. A quiet girl sifting herself tooth and nail through tiny mesh, as if dying by degrees. I count you by single grains until your emptiness blooms, reappears as an arm, then a leg, until your whole being forms in my reimagining. When you left, sterilised, my gown was loosened, its patterned fabric flowers puckered their small mouths, tiny forget-me-nots wilted. I left when you were singing in your beautiful sleep. I left you by the window, and the woman on the radio was talking about funerals and caskets, and said she had a remedy for loss. It's all to do with eggs, she said. The sun was beating down, grass browning, and I knew by each increment I was losing you. Imagine if it was colder, the kind of cold that leaves lakes stoppered by ice. It would be like diving into someone else's sorrow. Suddenly, it is painfully enticing to push my body through glass. Don't push your body through glass. This is playing field, isn't it, Biggie? Do you want to read this one? I'm just going to attack the tab. Okay. We come to look at the bones. Your hand fumbles mine, palm sticky, wax crayon coated. He lures us somehow, leads us to the field's edge, pokes with a stick, shouts, See there, no there. We search the earth to see the dead man's corpse, how his skull leaks worms, larvae burrow in sockets, beetles black as currants shuttle themselves, click clicking over shins and elbows. He spits in his palm, makes me spit in mine, then shake. I drop yours to do it. It's the hottest day of the holidays. You shiver chap bottom lip hanging like a gash you stuff in your thumb i smell the barley hear it crack in the heat this one here is green light he thinks it's strange that nothing's ever felt quite like this we're wearing armistice poppies on our labels red hold hearts beating like late fledged birds caught in autumn's frost 
My numb lips hardly move. It's as if he's suddenly invented time and we walk out of stride, down wide Exeter pavements, trundle hand in hand as though passing a lit torch to a couple heaped in winter coats, convinced love belongs to them. How at night it lights up green, and as far as he knows, nobody else has seen it. This one's quite a long one, so you have to bear with me here. This one's called Fire Ants. And they don't die, they just keep spooling like breath, and even when the path is swept free of soil, they still pool in damp patches. You instruct me to stamp on them, and not to think so much, but I watch the rivulets pour, their rapid cool bodies like endless traffic, serpentining cracks, bridging gaps in the earth until next door's dog starts howling as it never has before, and I know that something terrible has happened over the fence. People are dropping glasses, cutlery, running across the lawn, and paper plates fall soundlessly, as if to blend in with the grass and sky that have waited quietly all day and remain unsurprised when the woman next door does what she did. And earlier when we were clearing the patio, you hosed me down as a joke, and the water spewed over the wisteria and the woman next door shouted because they had tablecloths laid out and a little awning, and you showed me scribbles in your notebook mark mocked her next door, ran your fingers across a smeared page of words, said, things can be lost forever then shrugged as if it didn't really matter. We are playing that game you do with a hose, when each spurt of water held back by the thumb is a word you'd like to say, or a curse, and you're aiming at next door's fence, covering and uncovering the hose with your thumb, and I'm laughing because it sounds like Morse code, and I'm laughing because I'm deciphering its meaning and you're falling backwards into the magnolia bush, as if in slow motion, and the hose is unfurling into a magnificent plume and the woman next door is shouting. But all we want to do is sort out the ants, Last year a trail of them made their way inside the house, ran around the edges of the carpet right past the TV. So today we're here, sentries at our posts, kettle in my hand, brush in yours. And I'm still holding it when everyone next door has dropped everything they're holding and they're running to the patio doors and something is happening and then there is shrieking and you're poking me in the ribs and I let the kettle fall. Don't hear it crash on the patio. Don't feel the lick of boiling water on my legs. Don't know they can run that fast to the front door, to next door. When I hold her I know she's already dead. And I watch an ant crawl across my shoulder, down my arm, and I hang on to her because she once told me, just after we moved in, that she'd rather die alone, and now a whole colony of relatives are picking their way through the doors and I can't keep them back. That's a powerful one, that one. This one isn't a poem I wanted to read out, but I did like this quote that it began with, which was, uh, It's not true that life is one damn thing after another. It is one, dim it is one damn thing over and over. And that was by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And so the last poem I want to read out here, The Library of Broken People, is catalogued by injury, the fractured, the ruined from hunger, the raped, the hammered shut. Some are clumped together as lost souls. Only the librarian can retrieve those. There's no ABC to damage. They litter the alphabet ad hoc. If you browse the catalogue, they give their injuries, lay themselves flat. Last week, two girls displayed their abdomens to a first year student, bickered over abuse, spoke of neglect, said life's an unworkable toy. Other victims are quieter, don't talk so much, even when the library's shut. They drop to the back of the index, all seal pup eyed, skittering at the slightest flex. I survive amongst them, wear a long jumper, drag sleeves down wrists. So yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting about this is that the subject matter isn't necessarily something that I would normally read about, but Morley does what I think, you can tell a writer is a good writer if it doesn't matter about the subject matter and you actually enjoy reading their work and getting an insight into their lives through the work that they've written, you know, and I think she does that really well here. So um, it's not the best poetry collection I've read this year. That would probably go to, I mean, Trash Panda by Lisa Cantoral was very good, but um, Transcript by Heinrad Backer is probably my favourite poetry collection of the year. But um, definitely a pretty solid collection. I give it like a 3.75 slash 4 out of 5 and would recommend if you want to support some sort of indie poetry. So The Unmapped Woman by Abigail Morley from Nine Arches Press. So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Unmapped Woman by Abigail Morley. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.